Yep. Loop tire. It's just so we loop to the same side. Yeah. If I can get it. Yeah, have my other glasses on. Yeah, that's right, Pete. We're all in that stage. Most right of the over. people who watch our videos are old. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that Make just a loop. pulls the tire. And you just pull it off like that so you've got a loop that's the same size. Yep. On all your rigs. Don't do what I do and cut the wrong end off because that's yeah. my normal. Uh, cut it off. And then you've got a loop with a knot in it. Yep. See that? Then pick up your Guru marker tape. Yep. Stick it on like that. Got Stick ya. it on the tape before you do it rather than the pole. Oh, it's I see. Yeah. And then, of course, put it onto your. Yeah, and then you'll get a section here. That's what I used to use, and it just rots and falls. Yeah, out. I'm the same. I use old pole elastic, and it, it, it doesn't do the job properly. You get your tape. Place the loop downwards. Yep. On the pole. And of course, if you go to a fishing tackle shop, they sell things like this, but they're, they're expensive and not as effective. Like that. So this Rack little this little trick not only saves money, it, it does a better job. And which then is your hook goes in there. Yep. And it retains it closer Up to the to pole, the, so yep. it don't get all twisted about. And exactly. That and this would be set at the depth that you wanted yep. it. For that your lashes, rig. whenever you go anywhere, your lashes are set what thick yeah. you want. If you're fishing the same fishery for weeks on end, yeah. you'll have a six inch lash and then you just... Yeah, brilliant. Talking. Absolutely and excellent idea. Say, this is one I've prepared earlier. Yeah, as you can see, there's the hook on there, the up to the float, and then the length of the lash up to there. Yeah. So that's set, ready to go. Right, Pete, if you could just run us through a few of your floats. As I say, Pete makes all his own floats. And these in the box, I'll open the box, and then Pete can show us. There's an array there for you, look at that lot. As I say, he makes all his own. I'm very lucky, really, because my rigs are awful, and he makes them for me as well, so that's quite handy. Which ones, Pete, would you say are your, your go-to float if you was fishing, say, four to six foot deep? General sort four of, six yeah, foot. general silver Normally fish. Normally you go a gram per foot. Yeah. So if you're fishing four foot, you go for a full, a forty. Like right, that one, forty. Ah, gotcha. And that. Yep. And then that's like larger bodied yeah, for deeper seven water. Foot, yep. A gram. Yep, got ya. Eighty for eight, and on or less like yep. that. The only time it alters is when you start getting down the edge and you want to start bulking for oh, gotcha. carp and, yeah. that, and F1s and then the float changes. And of course these little, the smaller ones are what they call the, the mud, mud, mud. Yeah, these are mud line floats. Mud line floats. That I make, them ones. Yeah, look at that. See, that's a 40. Yeah. I do a 40s and 50s and really there's no need to go any smaller than that when you're over in the mud line. No. It's only when you start getting deeper and going down the edges. Gotcha. Then your floats change again because they're no good because they're not stable enough. Yep, I understand. And then you start going to ones like that. Ah, with the longer stem. Longer stem for a bit more stability. Yep. And that. But the better in glass. Hang on, have I got a glass one? They're like the same size, but I've got them in line enough. Oh, that's and then glass. They go in the glass. They're a bit more yeah. robust and. Got you. So your carbon stem and your glass yeah, stem. Yeah. You're two different floats, right. but the same. But I don't like wire myself. Yeah. Because it bends up. And yeah. I've tried the uh, Teflon stuff. Gotcha. Flexible wire. Yep. I just don't like it. So all I do is stick two number eights underneath the yep. glass. And when you up. when you shot up, Pete, you you always leave a little bit for the for the ones that are steadier, the ones that go above the float, or do you? Basically, shot the float to as it should oh be. Oh no, I would put a few yeah. telltale shot back, on it. Yeah, and, and the, the back, back shot, shot above it. And yeah, not like Got everyone. You. you watch any video, they show you what to do. This yeah. is just the way I do it, sort of thing, and that's it. That's brilliant. And what about the. Uh, let's have a look at the ones on your winders. Yeah. Oh, look at that selection there. Dear me. And they're all ready to go, Pete, yeah. all hooked up, and you've got yeah. written on the side what they... Yeah, not tidy at all, though, but I know where they are. Yeah. 
things I make my own flow, so I'll get to them and I'll go right. I know I don't want to shorten. So and I see that you, you could put two on to one winder, yeah, that's handy. Yeah, just double them back over yeah, on each other. Yeah, that's, that's good because basically it saves you room as well, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, you can do it with a normal rig, but yeah. it's not as tidy as these. The Preston ones are good. But yeah. yeah. Oh, they're excellent. And then carp down the edge ones. And these would be on a very robust line. Yeah. Yeah, these are on 022 to 018. And 022 would be roughly about eight to ten pounds. Eight to ten pounds. Which maker you use? And the 018 look length like about six. Yeah. Yeah. Six or seven. So, I mean, yeah. yesterday in the competition, you said you had them to 18 pounds, and that would have been on that sort of rig. Yeah. 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 And I lost them to 18. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's excellent. But yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Down the edge. And when you get a deep edge, you have to start altering your floats again. Yeah. To, oh, you do that. Because you want, it depends on the fish. If you're F1 fish, you're in the 1.7 Bristol, and then when you start going for carp, go to a 2, 2.5. Got you. And that, and then your body change again. And once you get the swim over, I see you've got a big bag of elastics there. Can we just show people the, the difference in sort of that thickness of the yeah. elastics? That's all there. Yeah, I mean, this is all my old rubbish that Wes has. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm a recycler. Yeah. I, I'll try and do yeah, good for the planet. Yeah, different grades and that. He'll be putting his hands in here later <laughs> and putting some of that out. See, that, what would that be, Peter? About That's, 16? Uh, 12 to 14. 12 to 14. Uh, yeah, and then... Yeah, there's the... Yeah, it's all on different makers and all that. At the moment, I'm a bit tight. I keep changing between the two. Yeah. What's your preferred elastic at the moment? I use the Drenham Powerpool now. Drenham Powerpool. I'm really sold on that at the moment. It'll change again in three months. But no, I've had no problem with it. I use it in white acres. Not a problem. Yeah. I'm using Slick or anybody else's at the moment. No, Drenham at the moment. Oh, that's it's great. Good value for money, really. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I get six meters for six, six fifty. Yeah. And that, yeah. That you can get three, top. three of your short tops yeah. or a couple of your big tops. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh well, that's excellent. Thanks ever so much, Pete. Right. We'll come back another time and you can show us a bit more of your stuff. Thanks right, ever mate. so much. All right.